So our Father, we thank you for this glorious day. We worship you, our Maker. Be lifted high, far above every situation, far above all circumstances, far above anything that has a name. We lift you high today. We celebrate your goodness, your mercy, your faithfulness, and your love that endures forever, your love that is unconditional. We thank you for all that you're doing in our world today. We thank you for all that you do in every life. We thank you for everyone joined to this broadcast today. We ask, everlasting Father, that your grace will pervade and permeate the atmosphere in every home, every office, in every car, wherever people may be right now, joined to this service. Let your hand rest upon everyone. Let grace be released. As we teach and preach your word today, let it minister grace to every hearer. Let no one be the same again. Cause the heavens to be opened in every location all around the world where anyone may be joining this service today. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor and adoration. Holy Spirit, this is your time. This is your moment. Glorify the name of Jesus and cause your hand to rest upon your word and upon every life that will partake of this. We give you glory and we praise your name today. In Jesus' precious name. Somebody put your hands together if you can. Put your hands together if you can, wherever you are, hearing the sound of my voice. It's so glad, I, I'm so glad to be with you again today. And it's such a joy to bring God's word to you. Wherever you are, hearing the sound of my voice, whether you're in, in Nigeria, in Lagos, my city, or any city in Nigeria, or all over Africa, Europe, North America, wherever you may be at this time, I wanted to, uh, you know, just be assured that the presence of God, the grace of God is with you right there. And from all of our locations, all of our expressions, uh, wherever you're joining from, I want to welcome you very, very specially. And I, I, I just want to, you know, assure someone again at this time that God is doing something new, something great in our world. And it's time for you to focus on what God is doing rather than paying so much attention to the devastation that has come upon our world at this time. Can I uh, just speak to the heart of someone before I get into the word of God this morning? That you shouldn't allow fear. You know what Proverbs 4 and 23 says? He said, said, keep your heart. Guard your heart with all diligence. And uh, uh, you, you need to understand that in keeping your heart, it's not just about, uh, you know, guarding uh, it away from evil or from what can contaminate it. Or also keeping it uh, in a state that it can flourish. So are you flourishing in your heart this season? That's a big question I have for everyone today. Are you flourishing in your heart this season? Can you truly say that Christ is ruling and reigning in your heart with his peace as a uh, prince of peace? Uh, is the prince of peace reigning in your heart at this time? Or is fear the order of the day in your heart? Is, is the joy of the Holy Spirit ruling and reigning in your heart at this time? I just want to encourage someone this morning uh, that what is happening in our world should not take precedent over what God is doing. The negative things happening should not take precedent over what God is doing. And when we look at the word of God, we see that there's nothing that takes God by surprise. We've been on this series of teachings that we've titled uh, 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 the, the makeover, the, the extreme makeover. And today I'm bringing a, a, a part in this series uh, which I've titled Rise and shine. If you have a neighbor, if you have somebody watching with you, if you have somebody engaging this with you, can you hear me tell that person, rise and shine? Or maybe we should personalize it uh, by saying, I will rise and shine. I will rise and shine. If you're on any of our social media platforms, this is the time for you to confess it. Go there and just give me that comment. Say, I will rise and shine. I will rise and shine. This is the time for us to rise and shine. And I'd love to start out uh, this teaching this morning that I've tied to Rise and Shine from Isaiah chapter 60 from verse 1 to 5. If it's your first time joining us at any of our teachings or broadcasts of the Elevation Church, I just, just want to uh, bring you to speed. We're being, bringing on this teaching series and we've taken our anchor scripture from Isaiah chapter 6 from verse 1 uh, uh, down to verse 3. The encounter, the here I am encounter we've called it which leads to an extreme makeover. The encounter that Isaiah had in Isaiah chapter 6, please uh, well, go over and watch the other part of the series, the past part of this series, and you'll be able to come up to speed with us. Uh, but today I'm focusing on uh, 
this challenge that I'm throwing out to all of us, that it's time for us to rise and shine. And I'm reading from Isaiah chapter 60 from verse 1 to 5 from the New King James Version. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Uh, I, I love to personalize that just, just, to, just to get the word of God into my heart a little bit as I go on today. Uh, and I will say it like this. I will arise and shine for my light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Can we say that together one more time? One, two, go. I will arise and shine for my light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Say amen, somebody. Uh, that's so good. I feel so good about that. I feel like saying it over and again, but I need to go on with the reading of, reading of, the, of the scriptures. It says, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people, but the Lord will arise over, over you, and his glories, glory will be seen upon you. It said, The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings uh, to the brightness of your rising. King, to so the brightness of your rising. So lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar and your daughters shall be nursed at your side. Then you shall see and become radiant. And your heart shall swell with joy because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you, the wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. The Lord bless the reading of his word. Uh, this scripture describes what's going on in our world today because it says darkness shall cover the heart and deep darkness. One translation says gross darkness, the people. We live in a time where uh, there's the manifestation of gross darkness because wherever there's darkness, you will see fear. You will see you know, uh, uh, all kinds of anxiety. You will see uncertainty. Uh, things will not be clear. And that's where uh, many people are today. That's what is happening in our world. That's where leaders are. That's where industries are. Just uh, not knowing what is ahead. And when people dwell in uncertainty, what happens is that they, 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 they start uh, to, to be cautious. You know, when you are walking in darkness, you don't walk anyhow. You don't walk with confidence. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's foolishness to walk with confidence in darkness because you don't know whether you're going to hit your head on something or whether you're going to hit your, 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 you know, your feet on something uh, as you go ahead. It's darkness. So people go cautiously. They, they, they try you know, to, to, to gain a bit of stability, uh, looking for something to hold on to. If you can just imagine right in your mind right there, if there's a power cut right in the house or in the office where you are right now, and the, the, the old place is in pitch darkness, and you need to make your way out of that room. Except you already mastered the configuration of that room, you will have to walk cautiously out of that room. You know, taking your time to be sure that you will not be injured. And, it, uh, and if there's any injury, it will not be fatal. That's where people are right now. So you see people hiding in their caves. Everybody trying to just secure his or her life. And everybody's living with a sense of, you know, uh, personal security or, or personal, uh, uh, you know, life preservation. So uh, this is a time where there's gross darkness on the people, darkness upon the earth. But the Bible says this is a time for you and I who have engaged uh, a makeover in our mind. You and I who, who have been seeing what God has been doing around us and interpreting it right and engaging a renewed mind, a renewed spirit, engaging fresh vision and fresh dreams, light, the light of God shine upon our heart so we are not of the dark. We are not of the darkness. We are not part of that darkness. Uh, it's important for me to emphasize this morning that uh, each of us must propose to know and hone our own brilliance at this time. This is a time for you and I to propose to hone our brilliance. I want to be able to hone my own brilliance at this time. Uh, so being present uh, to your purpose means that you desire to grow in your brilliance. So when you hone your brilliance, you know that the light of God is shining upon me and I'm reflecting that light. My heart is not 
it's not opaque, it's tra transparent, it's reflecting, it's reflecting the light of God to my world. The light of God is shining through me. I hone my brilliance. That's what I'm speaking to today. How do you hone your brilliance at this time? How do you take responsibility for your brilliance? How do you stay present to your purpose, which means uh, that you desire to grow in your brilliance? It's shining so brightly, even in the midst of darkness, and you desire to grow in that light. So it's not about the size of your light. It's about making it shine, making it shine. You know this song that we used to sing back in the day, this little light of mine, I'm going to make, let it shine. This little light of mine. And I remember a man of God back in the day once just spoke against that song that your light is not little. So stop singing this little light of mine. But for the sake of this message, I'll say, let's not get into the argument of whether my light is little or my light is big. The most important thing about light is not the size of the light, it's whether I'm shining it or not. You can have uh, like a flood light or big light uh, 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 and you keep it somewhere. It's, it's useless. I can just have a candle, and in a, a, when, when I'm in a dark street, when everywhere is dark and gloomy, when somebody is suffering in darkness, if it's just that candle that I can bring out and say, oh, this is my little light, I'm shining it, it makes a world of difference at that time, at that material point in time. That's what I'm speaking to this morning. Are you part of the people hiding in, in caves, literally speaking, hiding, you know, just hiding Everywhere, I know that we are observing social distancing at this time. I know that we, we need to minimize movement. But that's different from just hiding away and hiding your light and forgetting that God still has an agenda for our world today. That in the midst of all this, God is still interested in saving souls, in redeeming marriages, in, in restoring young people. God is still interested in rekindling joy in the heart of the people. God is still interested in using people to answer other people's prayer. God is still interested in raising people who will pray for other people. God is still interested in uh, raising an army that care uh, about other people. People that will care for other people. People that will be there and stand in the gap for other people. There are different ways that God expects you and I to shine our light at this time. So the more the darkness in our world, the more we should shine our light. And if you can get into the heart of God this season, you will hear him saying, my children, it's time for you to shine your light. It's time for you to shine your light. What's the use of light if it's not being uh, brought up in the midst of darkness? In fact, this is the time that we, we, the glory of the, uh, of the light that we carry uh, should manifest or should show forth much more. If you carry your light into the noonday, for instance, and you, you, you have a flashlight in your hand and you're walking through, uh, um, uh, you know, in the afternoon, just walking around your vicinity, maybe your, 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 your residence or something, uh, nobody knows that you're carrying anything. But you, you get out at midnight, especially if there's no light in, in, in the vicinity. Get out at midnight and just take, even if it's a small flashlight that you have in your hand, even if you just put on the flashlight of your phone, everybody knows that somebody is walking through that place with light in, in, in his or her hand. I don't have enough time today. Maybe I, I will have demonstrated it to just show you that if I, if I shut down this entire place right now and it's in peak darkness and I bring out just one small light, the effect that it will create. The effect that it will create. Many of us have seen concerts before in big uh, auditoriums or in stadium, uh, in, in, in a stadium where they just shut down the light and everybody puts, put up their, 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 their phone and the, the light of their phone. See the effect that it creates simply because there is darkness. If the entire light were to be on, it will not create the same effect. So when there's darkness, we are positioned to shine our light like the way we've never done before. Now, the big question for today is, are you shining the light of your God-given assignment? Are you shining in the light of your God-given assignment this season? Are you shining in the light of your God-given assignment? You know, uh, for the next couple of weeks, I'm still going to stay on this. 
and, uh, you know, reading Isaiah chapter 6 from verse 1 again, you see what happened there. The moment Isaiah had that experience that in the day, uh, in the year that King Uzziah died, I, I saw the Lord, his train filled the temple, you know, and the train of his rope filled the temple and all that and all that. And then he had an encounter that an angel taught his tongue. And he said, oh, I'm a man of unclean lips and from an unclean people. And from that point, he was able to hear what God was saying. God saying, who shall go for us? Who shall we send? And Isaiah, not being asked, but just is dropping on that conversation with a heart that has been remolded, with an extreme makeover uh, mindset. Isaiah said, here I am. Here I am. Send me. I'm alive to my assignment. It's time for me to shine my light. Time for me to shine my light. God wants to use each and every one of us this season. You know what uh, uh, Matt, Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12 says, when you read it in the Passion Translation, I think it's a good time for me to read that. Matthew chapter uh, 11 and verse number 12 in the Passion Translation. It says, from the moment John stepped onto the scene until now, it's like the way King James put it, that since the day of John the Baptist up till now, uh, Passion Translation says, the moment that John stepped onto the scene until now, the realm of heaven's kingdom is bursting forth and passionate people have taken hold of its power. You know how the King James wrote it? It says, since the day of John the Baptist up till now, Matthew 11 and verse 12, since the day of John the Baptist up till now, it says, the kingdom of, uh, of heaven suffers violence. And it said, the violent take it by force. When you read it just like that, you think you're saying that, oh, it's time for us to come out with uh, guns and dagger and say, oh, we're violent for, for Jesus. No, no, that's not what he's saying. It's that, People with impetuous zeal, they seize the moment, they seize the day, they show up for God, they understand God's agenda, they is drop on God's conversations, they know, they see, when they see a need, they respond appropriately, understanding that from the day of John the Baptist, passionate engagement of divine agenda has been legalized. That's how another translation put it that, uh, that, 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 that uh, uh, passionate zeal for God's kingdom has been legalized, has been, you, you know, has, has become a commonplace because John demonstrated some radical engagement for God's agenda. I mean, this guy left uh, uh, people of his days and went into a place, uh, into the wilderness just to be on his own. He wasn't eating what everybody was eating. There was many things that John the Baptist just did differently demonstrating impetuous, uh, you know, zeal for God's kingdom and for what God had in mind for that time. That looks like where we are today. In the midst of this darkness, we need to shine our light. Shining your light starts with meeting or responding to a need. We can't talk enough about this. And like I said, uh, we're just laying the foundation even for this discussion in this message. Uh, it starts with Meeting or responding to a need. If I can just ask you this practical question. In the last month or perhaps in the couple of months or maybe in the last three months through the lockdown up till now, what, what, whatever is happening in your nation right now, maybe there's even a wave of a second lockdown. But in, uh, since COVID hit, wherever you are, up till now, if you, if you want to just follow through with me with this message, I'd love to ask you this question. From that time till now, how have you been able to shine your light in response, I mean, with a respect to meeting people's needs or responding to a need around you? Has God used you to touch a heart since that time? Have you been instrumental to turning someone back to God? Have you been instrumental, you know, to... Helping someone overcome fear and trepidation. Have you been instrumental to helping someone overcome lack? Have you been instrumental to helping someone resolve a marital issue that is threatening to destroy the home? Those are the big questions that we need to ask at this time. Because Jesus said, whoever keeps his own life said he will lose it. It's the one that's willing to lose it for the sake of the kingdom that will find it. 
And he will not find it the same way. He will find it, in, you know, just like Isaiah 6 a day this describes it. That when you arise to the shining of your light, he said, you know what, what he said there? All the things that people are looking for, that's what you, you he said, lift, lift, lift up your, your eyes around and see. He said, they all gather together to you. Your sons shall come from afar. You know, your, your daughters shall be nursed at your side. And he said, uh, everything around you just tends to change. Verse, verse 5, there, said, then you will see and become radiant. And your heart shall swell with joy. Uh, many people are looking for joy right now, but you don't know that the joy that you're looking for cannot be found in hiding, cannot be found in, in hoarding things, cannot be found on focusing on yourself alone. It can only be found when you create joy for somebody else, when you're there for somebody else. When was the last time you went to your knees to travail in prayer for somebody that is in pain? That's what I'm talking about this season. That's what I'm talking about this season. We shine our light in different ways. And God is waiting on you and I to be able to shine our light this season. So let me, let me uh, describe this with some characters in the scripture. And I, I, I love to start like this. In the last few days of Jesus' life, he was in between the, the you know, the, the, the rock and the hard place. Uh, I don't know how to put it better. It was in between. It was like when the Israelites were leaving Egypt and they almost changed their mind. Because when they saw the issues, when they confronted the Red Sea, for instance, they told Moses, are you sure? Listen, this, this looks like a bad idea. Moses, I've even smoking something because we don't even know whether <laughs> this looks like a bad idea. It's better we just go back to, to where we're coming from. When Jesus got into the Garden of Gethsemane in the same vein, it, it, it started to look like a bad idea. All this thing about dying for the world. There are many people right now, they are in between changing their mind about following Jesus, changing their mind about being married, changing their mind about this business or this career that, they have, they, they, that God has called them into. Many people in the social sector now who run all kinds of NGOs, they are in between changing their mind. Is this really worth it at this time? There are pastors that are discouraged at this time. There are, there, are, there are Christians that are seriously discouraged at this time. Jesus got to that point in the Garden of Gethsemane. Oh, if it's, if it's possible, let this call pass over me. He knew that just like John the Baptist saw him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. Jesus knew that the, the ultimate of his presence here, the ultimate assignment, the ultimate vision was for him to be crucified on the cross. But when he got to the point when he was supposed to be crucified, what happened? Jesus started to second-guess the whole idea. Started to second-guess the whole idea. And there are many people at that point now, second-guessing their lives, second-guessing the decision they made 10 years ago, 20 years ago, the path that they have emerged for themselves. And he the heavens uh, will be wondering right now, will we allow this person to derail or to miss it? Who can we send? Who shall go for us? That's where we are right now. Jesus got to that point and many things could have gone wrong. And maybe the plans of God will not have worked out because he may have needed to send somebody else apart from him. If he changed his mind, if he chickened out at that time, many people are changing their mind right now and God wants to send you and I to them. God needs you. He needs me at this time. Let, let me buttress what I'm saying with this. In, in the Synoptic Gospels, uh, that's Matthew, Mark, uh, and Luke, the ones that are similar, that's the ones called Synoptic Gospels uh, because they, they, they have the same sequence. All of them reported the case of Simon the Cyrenian who was co-opted at a point where the people holding Christ knew that if anything is not done at this point, something may go wrong. That many people are at a critical juncture right now Something is about to go wrong in their lives. And God is always looking for somebody that he may send into that situation. And the question you, you need to be asking right now is, who is God sending me to? What is heaven anticipating concerning my next move? Because I say next move, that will gladden the heavens. There's another next move. Or oh, that, you know, it's like when, when, you know, I love to watch football and when, when somebody is face, facing the goalpost or getting close to the goalpost and it's about to shoot and then it, it was over the Bible. Oh. The moves that some of us have been making this season, everyone has been saying, oh, 
Not again. Not again. No, uh, uh, you can't sink into depression again. We need you to take people out of depression. <laughs> Not again. That's what the heavens are saying at this time. Not again. They want to be able to clap. Yeah. They want to be able to cheer us on. Just like we do on the soccer pitch. When there's a goal and everybody's shouting, yeah, it's a goal. That's what, they, they, that's what heaven is looking forward to in your life right now. That's why you need to get off that couch. Get off that bed. And know that the call of God is upon your life. And this is the season for you to shine your light. Say amen, somebody. Glory be to Jesus. <laughs> this is the season for you to shine your light. So I, I was talking about uh, Simon the Cyrenian. I read from, uh, let, let's, let's read from uh, uh, perhaps the book, of, uh, the book of Luke. Luke chapter 23. I read from verse 26. Luke 23 from verse 26. In the New King James Version, it says, Now, as they led him away, they laid hold of a certain man. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. They, they laid hold of a certain man, Simon a Cyrenian, who was coming from the country. And on him, they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. That he might bear it after Jesus. So, this was a crucial time. The soldiers, they knew that as this man was going with this cross, if we allow him to continue like this, he may die before he gets to Golgotha. And without them knowing that it's critical, that it's crucified alive, <laughs> they, I don't know whether it was just out of compassion or because the sentence was crucify him, don't kill him anyhow, crucify him. They made sure that someone will bear the cross for him. And you know, it's not all the time that doing the will of God or shining your light will be mainly of your own volition. Simon the Cyrenian here was forced to take the, 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 the cross from Jesus. Uh, another account from Mark chapter 15, when you read 21 and 22 of the same experience, Mark wrote it this way. He said, then they compelled, I love that word, that's what I'm looking for. They compelled a certain man, Simon a Cyrenian, and he even mentioned uh, his family member, said the father of Alexander and Rufus. It was like Mark was writing it for all of us to know that this is not, I'm talking about Simon, the Simon that you know. So he's the father of Alexander and Rufus. You know, Luke did not mention the name of his children. Yeah, he only said he's a Cyrenian. By the way, saying he's a Cyrenian, uh, Cyren is now, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a place in Libya. So it's important for you to understand that Simon is a, is a, is a, is a person. It's is an historical person. It's, this is not a parable. This is not a story. Uh, I, I mean, this is not something that was conjured. Uh, they spoke about the fact that this guy was an African living in Israel or so at that time. Uh, because for Mark to be saying he's the father of Alexander and Rufus, it meant that people should know his children. And I'm speaking to anyone today who says, I'm not even in my own country. And in these days of racism and all that, I will behave myself. No, this is not the time to behave yourself. When it comes to the gospel, when it comes to what God has in mind for his word today, he wants you to participate. He wants you to participate. Very important that you understand that God wants you to participate. Let me deal with some facts in, in, in this case. Some facts in this case. One is that Simon was a real historical person and he was there at a real historical moment. A real historical moment right there at this real historical moment. If you are a real person, there's an historical moment. This season, there's a historical moment that God is working out. And he wants you to be able to step up to the plate at the right time to do the right thing. That's to enforce the kingdom. Simon, though forced into it, if not for him, Carrying that cross behind Jesus as he was going. Maybe the Messiah would not have made it to Golgotha. There are many people today that God's hands are on their lives. They have a purpose for God, but they are discouraged right now. They are tired right now. Uh, they, they, they have been, uh, uh, something is trying to stop them right now. And you, as, uh, like a, in the similitude of a Simon, God 
may just want to compel you at this time to do something for someone. To pick up a cross. Simon was a foreigner, an African, who served Jesus in his final hour. Served Jesus in his final hour. He didn't, they, 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 you know, they didn't even give him the chance to say, are you a Jew? Or They said, Simon the Cyrenian, the father of Alexander and Rufus. They just got him and put the cross of Jesus on him. Carry it and follow him. Yeah. Carry it and follow him. I'm sure maybe if he was a Jew, he would probably even have argued. Now, which one is my own? This guy has been sentenced. Let him die, you know, if he would die. So I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging someone with this message today that there are things that it may even look like God may be forcing on you this season. During the lockdown, I had an experience. I was in my house and I was just hearing the, the, you know, this loud noise within my estate. And I was about to get on a, on a webinar where I was supposed to be joining a panel to speak. But something told me that this noise cannot be going on in your estate and you will just get on a webinar for, you know, because you are, you, you, people are expecting you. You need to do something. Because you are in this house doing this webinar. If this thing gets out of hand, it may affect you where you are. Maybe God wants you to abandon this. Maybe talk to them that you will join in 10 minutes and quickly go and solve this. And that was what I did. I just jumped out of my house. I just told my wife, this noise, I need to go and look at what's going on. I can't be here and maybe two people will be killing themselves. No. By the time I got there, I was a man and a woman. The woman was not even his wife. Uh, she was just somebody within the estate that had an altercation and was a lot of pulling and shoving, and, you know, just out of everybody living in the estate, two of us, oh, I mean, many people were not home maybe at that time, but only two of us guys came out, and we were able to say, no, 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 let's resolve it this way, let's resolve it this way. Madam, you, know, you, you can go. We will talk to this man. We will sort this out. We will sort that out. That's what God expects of us. I mean, this is just a simplest uh, example that I can give right now, but I'm just saying that God wants our attention the way they got the attention of Simon. So Simon carrying the cross behind Jesus is a beautiful and, and, and painful picture of our calling as disciples, you know, according to Luke 9 and verse 23. In Luke 9 and 23, Jesus said, If anyone will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. So in other words, the writer of the book of Luke, Dr. Luke was suggesting to us, you know, uh, he wrote it in Luke 9 and 23, and then in this uh, 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 other part of, of, of Luke where he wrote about Jesus and Simon the Siren, it, it, there's just a connection there for us to see that at, this, at, at, the, at a certain crucial time, God will want us to carry our cross and follow him. Which cross are you carrying today? Which cross are you carrying today? So the call to suffer for Jesus is often, you know, sudden, and sometimes it's costly. And it's also seemingly random. Random. It can be random. Very random. Something just happened. You know, or something just happened and you have to show up. Something is happening to a friend and you have to be there. Somebody is down. Something is going on. That's what I'm talking about. Sometimes it's just random. But Jesus wants us to step up to the plate. He wants us to step up to the plate. Simon, you know, Simon's help brought both relief and suffering. It sustained Jesus to get to the cross, but also took him to his own cross. <laughs> this is both an action of compassion and expediency. That's what I'm talking about. You, we need to see what is going on right now uh, from the point of view that it would demand certain actions of compassion and some other times actions of expediency. It is expedient that this be done at this time. It's expedient that I step up. There are many people uh, who maybe you, you are, an, uh, um, what do we call it? A volunteer in a church. Volunteer with an NGO. Volunteer. You do all kinds of volunteering. But for the last three or four months, you've been saying, they don't need me there. So if you are not shy in the church, church has not been meeting. If you are in a church like ours, especially in Lagos here, which we, we have not been meeting, you can just say, oh, they don't need me. They don't, you know. Uh, um, when everything is normalized, I will, I will serve God. Yeah. You know, Simon didn't have that option. <laughs> they didn't write him ahead of time. Like we usually would write an email to say, oh, to all, all of our volunteers and all. And they, no, no. I, a situation just happened and he was there. 
and he was compelled, and then he stepped up to the plate. May you not be found wanting when God needs you the most. That was a very crucial moment. If Christ uh, did not get any help with that cross, he may not make it to Golgotha. The plans of God, I don't know what could have happened. And God always needs us uh, to step up to the plate, either from a heart of compassion or expediency from time to time. That this is expedient and I must be there. And I must do something. And I must just step up to the plate. Glory be to Jesus. I said, glory be to Jesus. So it's important for us to understand that at the hardest hour, you know, uh, uh, where God needs something the most, he wants us to be attentive enough to rise and shine our light at that time. Time will not permit me today, but I can go on and on and on, you know, on how people, uh, you know, paid, uh, uh, played their part all through the scripture. You know, Simon was used at this auspicious moment for the cause of helping Jesus fulfill this destiny. Who is God using you at this auspicious moment where there's darkness everywhere to help to fulfill their destiny, even in the midst of darkness? All through the scriptures, you'll see many other people, many others that play their part. You know, the, the, for instance, the woman with the expensive alabaster box. In Mark chapter 14, when you read from verse 3 to 9, the Bible says, uh, uh, and in verse, uh, verse, verse 3 of Mark 14, and being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, he sat at the table, and a woman came having an alabaster flask of very costly oil of, 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 of spikenard. Then she broke the flask and poured it on his head. But there were some who were indignant among themselves and said, why was this fra fragrant oil wasted? For it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they criticized her sharply. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. For you have, you have the poor with you always. And whenever you wish, you may do them good. But me, me, God always has an agenda that is time bound. The kingdom requires impetuous zeal at the time of darkness. And it's a people with a mind that has been made over, with a spirit that has been renewed. God expects us to, to step in. Jesus said, you know, some people say all kinds of things. Uh, uh, I mean, for instance, maybe about giving to God and all that. Oh, uh, uh, it's better to give to charity than to give to God. The preaching of the gospel is center, central to God's agenda for this planet. Not willing that any will perish but that all will be saved. When we give to the poor or give to charity, sometimes we're demonstrating the light of God. But to the cause of preaching the gospel is also very central. Jesus demonstrated this there. He said, the, the poor you are with you all the time. Do what you need to do. Help people all the time. But when it comes to preaching the gospel, it is time bound. So whether I make myself available to preach the gospel, practically speaking, or I give towards the preaching of the gospel, giving, you know, uh, so, so, so that uh, the gospel can be on the media, on TV, on radio, on internet, uh, you know, everywhere. It's, it's a part and parcel of what God expects us from us at this time. Jesus said, this woman, what she has done, she did for me. And I'm not the poor. Do I love the poor? And I wanted to do stuff for the poor. And you always have opportunity to do stuff for the poor. But what is meant for me, do for me. He said, this woman has prepared me for my funeral, has encouraged me to go to the cross, has encouraged me to follow the course of my father. Glory be to Jesus. Like I said, I can go on and on. You, you, I mean, and it's not, it's, it's not even whether you have an uh, alabaster box of expensive perfume or whether you are like another person, Joseph of Arimathea, who just showed up and used his influence, just his influence. Went to, 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 the, to, to, to Pilate and secured the body of Christ, and then gave his own tomb, and said, not only will I, because he, he was a rich man, so he had influence with Pilate. They released the body of Christ to him. Then he went to a tomb that he has bought for himself, 
in, that has been, you know, cut out of a rock. And he said, this is where you're going to lay him. And then shut the tomb, put a stone on it. How are you using your influence at this time? Especially for the cause of the gospel and for the cause of the kingdom of God. How are you using your influence? Very important. Because you can be a Joseph of Arimathea at this time, and you may even have plenty at this time, but you're just consuming everything on yourself. Not looking at people and not asking, what does God have in mind for this time? And how can I play and play big? Joseph, Joseph of Arimathea played big. He didn't only use his influence to shine his light before Pilate to secure uh, the body of Christ. He gave his tomb. He gave his tomb. He gave his tomb. And lastly today, you see the woman, uh, the, the widow woman that Jesus was looking over the treasury. And the woman dropped two mites. Two mites there. You know, in Mark chapter 12, when you read from verse 41 down to 44. Just two mites. And Jesus said, this woman has given more than everyone here. She zealously contended for the kingdom of God. Zealously pushed herself. She was saying in her heart, perhaps, Lord, whatever you are doing in our world today, don't do it without me. I may be poor, but I'm not completely flat. Don't count me out. If it's just two mites, I will drop it. <laughs> if it's whatever I can do, just to make sure that the kingdom of God progresses and the light of the glorious gospel continues to shine, I'm going to do it. That's exactly what that woman did. And her name has been written in gold all through the scriptures. Your assignment need not be, you know, grand or popular for you to uh, know that you are living a purpose-driven life. It doesn't have to be grand or popular. What Simon of Cyrene did, not very popular, not very grand, but he was there. The same for the, 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 the woman who gave two mites. Prominence is not necessarily a sign of divinity. We need to get that straight. So whatever you can do in your corner, there's a time to do it. And the God who sees in secret will reward you openly. And God has orchestrated life you know, such that there, 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 there is as much to learn from the hand as there is from the lion. So, there's always something to learn from. So if I had more time today, I can unpack what to learn from the woman who gave the two mites compared to Joseph of Arimathea. There's a lot to learn from the hand, just like there's a lot to learn from, from, from the lion. So, we need to focus on responding to God's call and the need that he has placed around us at this, at this time. The need that he has placed before us. Every time you do so, every time you focus and, you know, just do something about the need, God's brilliance shines through you. That's what happens. Just shines through you. Just shines through you. It shines through you. Lastly today, please understand that there's more to you than the world has seen. Arise, shine. And show forth your brilliance. Can you hear me tell somebody beside you? Say, arise, shine, and show forth your brilliance. Lift your two hands with me wherever you may be right now. And just bless the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your word. We thank you for that makeover that's happening in somebody's heart. We thank you for somebody who is waking up to their purpose right now. We thank you for somebody who is waking up to the validity of the assignment in you right now. We thank you for someone who has received grace and divine energy from this message today to stand for you to embrace a fresh level of zeal for the kingdom not to be broken this season not to be pushed to the corner but to shine our lives we thank you everlasting father why don't you go ahead again and renew your commitment to him today and say lord i will serve you with my life i will not hide in the corner I will not allow what is happening this season to push me to the corner. I will stand for you. I will do my best to promote the kingdom. I will shine my life this season. Let that be the prayer of your heart right now. And as you say it, I believe that you are receiving grace right now to do that which is God's will for your life. You are receiving grace. Grace is coming upon you right now to do that which is God's will for your life. 
grace is coming upon you right now. If you can, lift your two hands to him and just pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit, and just say, Lord, I receive grace. My light must shine. My light must shine. My light must shine this season. My light must shine this season. I decree whatever is, uh, is causing me to hide my light, whatever uh, is, is holding me back, I break off from them. I break the hold of discouragement over my life, over my heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I'm standing in the liberty of the Son of God. From this moment, in the name of Jesus, I hold my brilliance and I will release my light. I will make it shine. In the name of the Lord Jesus. So I stand against anything at all that is reducing the intensity of my light. I decree today uh, that my light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me and I'm shining and I'm shining and I'm shining in the name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody pray today, pray today. Pray in the spirit, pray in understanding. Let God hear your voice. Let him know that you are ready. Let him know that you are ready for the things that he wants to do in your life this season. Glory be to Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you for all that you are proposed to do this season in the life of your people. Do it that your name may be glorified. We give you glory and we give you praise in the precious name of Jesus. I love to pray the words that God has put in my heart for uh, a couple of people joined to this service right now. And I'd love to pray for you. I'd love to pray for you. And before I pray, I just, I just, uh, let, let me just say this first prayer. For anyone who may be joined to this service right now, who may be saying, PG, I'm far away from God. Maybe it's your first time being on our broadcast. And you're saying, I've been cut off from God. I want to live my life for God. Sin is what separates us from God. When you live perpetually in sin, guilt and condemnation will follow. And even if you have given your life to Christ before, you start to live out of fellowship with God, without connection. And maybe you've never given your life to Christ before or said a prayer or to be joined to him. I want to pray for you right now. So whether you are giving your life to Christ for the first time or you are rededicating your life to him, I'd love to pray for you right now. If you, if you don't mind, can you put your hand on your heart? If you're not driving or your hand is not busy, and I want you to just say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I've heard your word today and I'm making a decision to come back to you. Say, forgive me my sins. Cleanse me from every unrighteousness. I accept you today as my Lord and my personal Savior. Start something new in my life. I dedicate my life to you afresh. Have your way in my life. Use me for your glory. Let my light shine for you this season. Rekindle your light in my heart. And let your fire start to burn in my heart for this purpose of your kingdom. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just said that prayer with me, I want you to go to the church room and let us know, uh, just, just right there, I just gave my life to Christ. I just gave my life to Christ. If you don't mind, can you just write it in the chat room? I just gave my life to Christ. Whether you're on the audio platform, or any of the social media platform, if you're watching on TV, uh, you, you'll see some numbers and emails with which you can contact us right now and let us know that you just made a decision to give your life to Jesus. We have a way that we want to engage with you. We have some gifts that we want to send to you, some uh, uh, materials, downloadable materials that will help you to grow in your faith. And that's why I wanted to take that decision and uh, let us know that you just said a prayer. In the name of Jesus, the hand of God will come upon you and you'll never be the same again. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, as we bring the service, uh, start the round of our love to lead us as a partake of the communion. Uh, um, it's, it's been a privilege leading us through this season every Sunday as we partake of the communion. And today will not be different. Uh, the hand of God will come upon you as we partake of the communion in the name of Jesus. Now I have uh, uh, this word in my, in my heart for someone as we partake of the communion. I can see uh, something. Uh, that there's someone, uh, you, you know, joining this service right now. God wants you to release your faith as you partake of the communion today. What is happening, what I can see is like uh, um, an animal, like a lion getting into a fold and just ravaging, you know, just like what David described. He said when a, a bear or a lion will come and take the sheep from the fold, it just looks like something is ravaging through your home right now, destroying things, causing all kinds of injuries, you know, destroying health, destroying all sorts, breaking down relationships. 
Somebody may even be li listening to me right now. Maybe it's in the life of your child. It just looks like the enemy is on rampage, just trying to destroy that life. The image I see is that of a lion that just got into a place and looking for what to, to, to grab. And so partake of the communion today by the power in the blood. The one who is called the lion of the tribe of Judah is showing up for you, empowering you to disarm every assailant in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I speak over your home today. In the name of Jesus, the home of anyone that this vision is applicable to, I decree right now that the hold of the devil is broken over your home. I declare in the name of Jesus that the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of Abel uh, comes upon your home today. And the, the hold of anything that is ravaging through that home is broken. I decree an end to every harassment of the devil. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. The second thing I've seen today is that somebody, uh, you, you, you stretch forth your hand like this and it's like the hand is empty. The hand is empty. Everything has been taken away. I don't know who you are, but God knows you. And I want to pray for you right now as we partake of the communion. Because God is filling that hand again. Whatever has been stolen is being restored. In the name of the Lord Jesus, and I decree over you one more time today that your hand will no longer be empty. In the name of Jesus. Remember that word if you're part of the Accelerate Conference? Your hand will not be empty. So I decree over you, whatever is taking things out of your hand, whatever has been taken out of your hand, I decree by the name that is above every name that there's divine rest restoration for you. In the name of Jesus, as you partake of this communion, the heavens over your life opens afresh for unusual divine restoration. Your hand will no longer be empty in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless your name. If you have uh, the communion elements with you, uh, this is the time for you to, to bring them up as, as I pray. As I pray, Lord Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to do this in remembrance of you. You commanded this ordinance. And as we stand as a church together by faith, virtually today, for everyone partaking of the communion, we command a release, a divine release, a season of divine restoration. We decree as we partake of this communion today, we remember your finished work on the cross of Calvary. This is your body that was broken for us and your blood that was shed for us. By this blood, we decree that evil is passing over every home. Wherever there's been a ravaging, wherever there's been a destruction of joy, of peace, of health, we decree right now, an end has come to that destruction. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. As we partake of this, we remember that you have set us apart for your goodness. We remember the gift of righteousness that you brought to us when you hung on the cross. And we decree that the hold of sin is broken over every life. That as we go into a new week, we receive grace afresh to function in newness of life, to function in our righteousness. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Go ahead and partake. Go ahead and partake. Thank you, Father. Father, we bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. As you partake of the communion table, uh, just, just uh, say a prayer in your heart. Uh, whatever request that you have, whatever, uh, uh, you, maybe you just, you just want to love on Jesus a little more today, just go ahead and do that right now as we bring the service uh, shortly to a close. I just have one or two more things to do and we'll bring the service to a close. Uh, firstly, I, I, I love to welcome everyone worshiping with us uh, for the first time. So first time joining uh, our, our service virtually. I want to welcome you very, very specially. Whatever time it is where you're watching right now, I want you to know uh, that it's our delight to have you join us. And uh, I want you to uh, please let us know it's your first time. Just, just, just go to the chat room or, or en en engage any of our, uh, our stuff that you can see on the screen and just let us know that it's my first time. Just write, it's my first time. It's my first time. We'd love to invite you to, to a, a short engagement uh, the moment uh, this is over uh, for you to join us on our Zoom platform. The details are now on the screen. Uh, we'd love to spend just uh, like five minutes of your time with you, get to know you a little better. Our officials, the host and hostesses are also sending uh, uh, the link with which you can just fill an engagement form just for us to, uh, if you don't mind, for us to get to know you, for us to be able to connect with you and uh, uh, keep in touch with you after today, send you some great gifts that you will love and that will help and encourage your spiritual development. Uh, if you don't mind, please join us on that Zoom uh, call. 
the moment this, the, this, this uh, broadcast is over and then uh, we'll be able to interact with you. God bless you and thank you very, very much for being a part of the service today. Also, we love to give to God every time we gather together. Uh, so this is a time for us to give to God. I want to sincerely appreciate everyone who has been giving even through this season. You know, uh, Philippians 4 and verse 19, Paul prayed a prayer there. He said, my, my God will supply all your need according to his riches and glory uh, in, uh, by Christ Jesus. I wanted to know why he prayed that prayer. It was because the, the, that church in, in Philippi, uh, even it, it, through the thick and the thin, they were supporting his ministry. This season, there's a lot going on, uh, uh, reaching out to a community, touching lives, get still remaining on the media to be able to preach the gospel. Uh, a, a lot going on that you're giving uh, uh, facilitate at this time. And I want you to know that God who sees in secret will not forget your labor of love in that you, you're sowing, even for some of us, sowing out of not enough. And God recognizes that and he, 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 he will pour out grace and favor upon you in the name of Jesus. As things will shift and turn around in our world today, your, your portion will not be missing in the name of of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to pray over everyone as we give today. Uh, whatever you're giving with your phone, your pad, your computer, uh, please get them out. The different ways we give uh, at the Elevation Church, you can see on the screen if you're watching on the audio platform, a link uh, will be sent to you there, uh, elevationng.org forward slash giving. When you get on that platform, you get all the information you need about giving. If you're watching from outside of the country, uh, we have the link there, uh, giving platform, uh, which is an international gateway. It can take your card and it's a secured platform uh, without any issues at all. And you can also use uh, the, the GT Bank platform with the details on the screen for you to do a wire transfer if you're from abroad, if you're local to Nigeria, you can use any of those three banks with a short code platform and wire transfer to give at this time. Let's say a prayer together. Our Father, we thank you for everyone honoring you with their giving today. Your word says, that we should honor you with our substance and with the first fruit of all of our increase. So we thank you for the grace to give today. We ask for a blessing over every giver. Open the windows of heaven. Cause your hand to rest upon us. Uh, cause favor and grace to rest upon every giver. Accept this as our worship and let your name be glorified. We thank you for all that you are doing in our lives and the many more things that you are set to do this season. Honor each one's faith as they celebrate you with their giving today. Thank you everlasting Father in Jesus precious name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for giving always, and we believe that God who sits in secret will reward you openly in the name of Jesus. When this is all said and done, you will be in the right place. You will be uh, 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 enjoying the goodness of God like never before in Jesus' precious name. One or two announcements, and we'll bring, bring the service to a close. Uh, the first one is about the Navigate Teens Conference, uh, which is an annual event for teenagers. Uh, it's always been a powerful, powerful experience for, my, for our teenagers. People travel in from outside of the country to be a part of it when we held it, you know, uh, in person, physically. But the good thing about this is that this year's Navigate experience uh, is now going to be virtual. Uh, it's a things conference with a virtual slant to it. Uh, and it's also not just going to be a one week, uh, five days experience. This is now going to be a month-long experience. I know a lot of us may be wondering what to do with your teenagers at this time. Uh, we, we, we've got you covered. So uh, navigate this year. we we'll start from 8, Saturday 8th of August, and it will run uh, to, until Sunday, the 30th of August. So it's a month-long event. Uh, plenaries will happen every Saturday. Uh, and then all through the week, we have life skills, vocational skills. We're going to be uh, you know, teaching all kinds of things virtually uh, from life skills to vocational skills, from material designs to cinematography to photography, all kinds of things uh, to leadership to, to public speaking, all kinds of things that would happen, and the kids will be blessed for it. And uh, so I wanted to uh, go ahead and please register. Registration is free. Yeah, this year it's free, it's virtual and free. So there's no reason why your teenagers, your nieces and nephews, and your kids uh, should not participate. ElevationNG.org forward slash navigate is the registration portal. It's open and we wanted to engage it as fast as possible. All right. Secondly, we have a vacation Bible school, which will also be online. And it will run uh, uh, from the 5th of August to the 7th of August. And afterwards, for the rest of August, we will have every Friday event 
for kids in that age bracket as well. Uh, and it promises to be very, very interesting. So to register for the Vacation Bible School for the younger kids, uh, please go to elevationng.org forward slash VBS. VBS standing for Vacation Bible School forward slash VBS. elevationng.org forward slash VBS. You can register your kids from age 7 to 12 uh, to be a part of Vacation Bible uh, School this year. Uh, for more information, please get on our website. You'll be able to get additional information concerning these events. Uh, I, I wish you the very best of this coming week, and I pray uh, that as you step into a new month, you will step in with grace, and the hand of God will, will continually rest upon you in Jesus' name. Please stay tuned for some more announcements, and God bless you. Have a great week. We trust you had a wonderful time in God's presence. Our next event will hold on Wednesday by 6.30 p.m. West African time, and it will be a praise party. Do stream live on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and on MixLR. It will also be airing live on Pop Central DSTV channel 189 that same day, also by 6.30 p.m. You can also save some data, tune in, and join the party. Ensure you follow us or subscribe to our social media channels at Elevation NG so that you can get service alerts when we start. Please join us for our morning prayers from Mondays to Saturdays, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. West African time on the Zoom app and on MixLR. The links are now displayed on the screen and would be shared on our various social media platforms. If you live outside the city of Lagos, we really encourage you to sign up to be a part of our online community where in addition to watching services, you can engage with people online for counsel, prayers and even friendship. Simply visit onlinechurch.elevationng.org to sign up and join membership. If you would like to connect with other believers in a smaller setting, please join one of our online small groups by sending an email to smallgroups.elevationng.org and wherever you are in the world, we will get you matched with new friends with whom you can fellowship. If you have a testimony, please share by sending an email to testimonies at elevationng.org. We would really love to rejoice with you. Also know that messages from the recently concluded Accelerate Online Conference are now available on our website. Simply visit elevationng.org forward slash resources to get your copy. Finally, during this season, though physical gatherings are still on hold, we're here for you as always. Simply contact us by sending an email to info at elevationng.org or give us a call on 0700 Elevate. That is 0700 353-8283. May God bless you and keep you. Do have a wonderful week. Did you know that we also broadcast our services on TV? That's right, you can save some precious data and watch us on the following channels. First time? Then join us for a five minute guest chat right after this service live on Zoom. We would love to connect with you and pray for you. All you have to do is simply follow this link. You can always have a beyond the ordinary experience if you place your faith in the supernatural. 
I'm very glad you have decided to embark on this study we're called Pleasing God. Uh, sometimes we forget that our relationship with God is symbiotic. We can be so laser focused on getting from God that we forget that we were created for His good pleasure. So, just as we would love to be pleased by Him, by God, He also wants to be pleased by us. Uh, and as, as we go on together in this study, we will learn how to please God. service on TV. Yes, our children's service now shows on Wazobia TV every Sunday for kids aged 9 years and younger. So after your service which holds from 12 noon to 12.30 p.m., the children's service will hold immediately from 12.30 p.m. to 1 p.m. So go get them tuned in and engaged. 